Because she's a psycho, I don't know how she can. Business. Are you, do you call me a psycho when you're not around me? No, not at all. We have plenty of parking. I have a lot of parking. Well, it's Wednesday. All right. Okay. Let's, we should get. We already speeded, right? Yeah, we're rolling. Oh, we've been speeding. We got that whole right. combo. Great. <laughs> well, that's perfect then. When do you park your car? Um. Hi! It's Kaki here. Today we're going to work on a song called Playing with Pink Noise. A lot of this technique I get from playing drums, so I'm going to explain to you what's happening on each hand. All right, we're going to start with the left hand. So again, here's our tuning. We've got C, G, D, G, A, and D. C, G, D, G, A, D. Cool. The song itself, the title comes from a friends of mine in a band uh, called Pink Noise, and um, a really cool band, and I really, really liked them, and I saw that another friend of mine was going to be on the same bill as them in some city, and I, and I wrote to her and I said, hey, I see that you're playing with Pink Noise. And some, for some reason I just thought, that's, an, that's kind of an interesting title, I'm going to save that one, I don't know what that means. Um, and ultimately that became the title of this song. Pink Noise is actually a phenomenon in, um, it's a little, it's kind of similar to White Noise, there's a lot of, it's weird, you should look it up, it's sort of involves some chaos theory, um, like a graph of points can actually be pink noise. And um, so anyway, it's just a, it's a cool idea, it's a cool thing, it is an actual sound um, if you want it to be. And so, uh, yeah, thus, thusly was the song named. Cut! I played the song on Letterman. I played this as part of a TED talk that I did. Uh, it's on an album called Likes to Make Us Longer, and um, this has been one of like my this has, like been my biggest hit. So a lot of people have seen it. A lot of people have thought it's really cool and very complicated and challenging. And the truth is, it's really easy to play if you understand what's happening fundamental in the song. All right. So once again, the unorthodox technique of taking the left hand from underneath the neck and putting it over the neck. And this particular instance, the reason for that is so I can reach over here and make a tap. So essentially what's happening is that the left hand is doing something fairly simple and so is the right hand and I am interlocking the rhythm. So think of it as like downbeats and upbeats. Left hand's got a downbeat, right hand's got an upbeat and they go back and forth, back and forth. Um, when you look at the tablature you'll see, if I just wrote this out in notation, all you would see is 16th notes just lined up the one after the other. So it's like the left hand has a beat, the right hand has a beat, back and forth, back and forth. And um, I'm going to play it much slower so maybe you can get a little bit more of a feel for that sound. So we're going to get back to that idea of each hand doing something one after the other. First we're going to focus on the left hand. And the only thing the right hand needs to do is it needs to mute the strings. And the way I do this is I take this part of my hand, this sort of fleshy part, and I put it down almost to the bridge, almost where the strings start. So when I pluck a string, I just get more of a muted sound as opposed to when I have this little... That's the sound we're looking for. specifically on these bottom two strings, on the E and the A. Again, I refer to strings in their standard tuning name and not in the altered tuning name. It seems to be a lot easier. Okay, so we're going to take this left hand and look at exactly what it does. On the E string at the ninth fret, it's going to hammer on with the index finger. And then it's going to pull off to the open note. And it's going to tap here and slap the neck of the guitar. So four things, one, two, three, four. 
I want you to do that over and over a few times, as long as many times as it actually takes to get it down, because um, this is the critical part of the of the. This is the foundation of this song. That pull off there is basically kind of roll my finger off. simple. That's not, you know, engaging a whole bunch of different things. It's not a bunch of wild technique. It may be feeling a little bit strange to be doing on the, on the guitar, but it's something that most people can do. All right, so I want you to think of those, each one of those as a quarter note for now. So we're going to have a measure of four notes, each of them is a quarter note, and these are going to be on the downbeats. One, two, three, four. One, two, now, we're going to look at the right hand. The right hand is so easy. All the right hand does is this. That's it. Now, of course, it gets a little bit more complicated as you go throughout the song, but fundamental to learning this riff, that's all you need to do. You need to just be, again, muted on these strings with the, with the soft part of the hand, and then your thumb in your index finger, you're going to go back and forth on the E and the A string. So I want to think, I want you to think of those as the upbeats. So if these are the downbeats in the quarter note, these are going to be the eighth note upbeats. So this is going to be one and. All right. Let's try to put them together. Now you have to att attack this really, really slowly. So basically we have eight things to do, eight accomplishments in this measure, in this basic, you know, little bit of, little chunk of a tune. And I want it to just, I want you to just count it out with me one after the other. We're just gonna really like talk it through almost. It doesn't even have to be in time. Um, the only thing that's critical to remember, we know what the left hand does, we know what the right hand does. Now, the way that you put these together is the left hand makes a motion, and then the right hand, and then the left hand, and back and forth. So if we start really, really slowly, we're going to get a feel for how these rhythms start to interlock. Okay, let's try it. So the first thing is I'm going to hammer on ninth fret, E string, with the index finger. Here we go. That's one. So now my right hand has to do something. It's going to pluck that note. And then the third thing is the pull off. The fourth thing is a pluck in the right hand. So let's just examine those four beats. So I want you to try that. Just like take your time. One, two, three, four. So again, all the left hand is doing right now is this. All the right hand is doing this. So it's important to remember you want to leave your index finger down as you're plucking on the right hand. So one, two, then hammer on, then pull off, three, four. One, two, three, four. You're gonna hear the same note because here it's a hammer on, here it's a pluck. And that's kind of part of the magic when it gets up to speed is a little bit of de a delay effect. So hearing that note twice is actually exactly what you want. This is a perfect, perfect song to use with a metronome. Start really slow, add up some speed, etc. All right, let's look at the second half of our phrase. Let's just, let's leave the first part alone, or you can pause the video and start practicing for a while. But now let's look at the second half, okay? Now again, we've got something that the left hand does followed by something that the right hand does. We know the right hand is just pluck, pluck, 
pluck, pluck. And the left hand is going to be doing this. So if I just say five, six, seven, eight, this will be five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. All right, we're going to put the whole thing together, that first half and that second half. We're going to count out all eight things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The only thing we're missing now is speed. As soon as we speed this up, we are definitely going to be playing with pink noise. And I'm just going to play that speed, but exactly what I've been showing you. Etc. Um, now to complete the phrase a little bit better, we're going to make this note move around just a little bit. So the first time we'll play it on the ninth fret. Second time we'll play it on the seventh fret. Everything else remains the same. So just move down to the seventh fret with a hammer on. Same pull off. Everything's the same. Back to the ninth fret for the third measure. Fourth measure is a little bit different in that we do not do this. We cut that out, the right hand stays the same. Instead, we go seventh fret, twelfth fret. I'll play that a couple more times. Again, right hand is still just very basic, that's all it's doing. So to put the whole thing together, this is what it's going to be like. Seven, twelve, back to nine. So that's the basic phrase of playing with pink noise. There are so many applications for these techniques that I've showed you. Um, you know, even just muting up this, these strings here and being able to hammer on and off gives you this kind of more tactile plastic muted sound that's really, really cool. I mean, it, it's not exactly a drum, um, but it's not exactly just that ringing guitar sound anymore. And you can get a really, really cool, it's just a different kind of vibe, you know. Um, Um, also, just being able to hit this part of the guitar. Lots and lots of different applications, really, really fun song to play. It's totally doable. I really believe that actually this is one of the easier songs that I've written. It's just that it's slow, it's 
pretty simple. And as you build speed, it, that's the only tricky part. Um, again, working with the metronome, taking your time, really, really thinking about the back and forth as a, as a drummer would. So we've got a beat here, a beat here. Cool. So there you have it, playing with pink noise. And um, if you've enjoyed this, please watch some of the other videos. If you have questions, get to me through my website or through Twitter, at Khaki King, on Instagram, at Khaki Graham, on Tumblr, at Khaki King .tumblr I don't care about Tumblr.com. Um, <laughs>